Do you know why I'm smiling? I'm smiling because I have a superpower that no other audio reviewer has. I'm pretty sure that that's true. <laughs> I think so. And that is that I get to regularly see my viewers' systems. And even better than that, you guys get to see each other's systems <laughs> because I put on shows like this. Today's show, the entire show is just viewer systems, but in pretty much every episode, I include at least one. But the, today, it's all your stuff, new stuff, old stuff, vintage, uh, analog, digital, tube, solid state, reel to reel, uh, DIY turntables. The selection is awe inspiring. It truly is. So, anyway, if you have ever sent in pictures of your system, Thank you for doing so, but you have to understand that I can't use anywhere near all of them. There's way too many to get to. But anyway, I do my best in these very special episodes where it's nothing but viewer systems. But anyway, so thank you if you have ever sent in pictures. But let's get to today's show and see what's in store. <laughs> it's a good batch. I, I promise you that. Patrick is first up. He lives in Calgary, Alberta, Canada and he has this gorgeous Studer A810 open reel deck, a Sansui 9090 dB receiver, PH16 phono stage, Danafrap's Pontus II DAC, a Technics SL1000 Mark II turntable, and the speakers, they look familiar. Those are Klipsch Cornwalls, but they're with modified mid-horn crossover and tweeter. Now, Eric rotates through his equipment a fair bit. He has a bunch of turntables, a Thorin's TD-145, Dual 701, and a Technics SL-DL1. For silver discs, he has Arcam Alpha 7 and an Oppo BDP-93. For amplifiers, well, what a selection here. Macintosh C28 and MC-2105. Sansui AU9500, AU999, AU777. Then there's an NAD3020, 3140, and a 2600 plus an Arcam Alpha 8R. For speakers, no shortage of them, Bowers & Wilkins DM2000, Energy 22 Reference, KLH Model 5, KEF, Kalinda, Never heard of that one. And then these classics, ADS L1230 and L420. And to top it all off, a realistic Minimus 7W. Now, Jim lives in Olympia, Washington, and he sent this very tasty picture. So his system spans from a 1967 Sansui AU777 to a 2000 era Alpha AUA607 MOS Limited. Then there are various Sansui turntables, CD players, as well as a U Turn Theory turntable. The preferred speakers are from Zoo Audio, Vandersteen, and ADS. Nick is 35 years old. He's from Fort Worth, Texas, and he's running a Voice of Texas speaker. Their Fraser Texan low frequency loudspeakers with all tech 808.8A compression drivers and all tech 511B horns with custom crossovers. The amplifier is a Rysung MT88 Mark II, streamer Nexus Tunebox 3, and the DAC is a Starting Point Systems Mini TDA 1543. Boris is 29 years old. He lives in Slovakia and has been listening to vinyl records since he was three years old. The speakers are yep, Klipsch Cornwall 3s. The main turntable is a Project X1 that's running an Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge. Phono preamp is a MoFi Studio Phono. Then there's a Yamaha RN303D stereo receiver. And then they have this cat, <laughs> Mia, who just turned three years old. Jason lives in Madison, Wisconsin, and he has been building this system since he inherited a Pioneer SX1250 receiver and a Pioneer PL518 turntable 
in 2016. In the second turntable, that's a Fluence RT85 with an Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge. The speakers are a Zoo Omen Dirty Weekends with cap upgrades. Cassette deck, another Sansui, a Sansui D100. CD player is a Marantz HD CD1, DAC, Marantz HD DAC1. Cables are by AudioQuest. And there's a Furman PST8D digital power station. Now, Andy sent these pictures. These are his two DIY turntables. He didn't give me a lot of information about them, but he says the results are very encouraging. Thank you for sending those in, Andy. Next up is Jay's system, and Jay is a friend of mine, and he is very proud of this system. The speakers are Canton Reference 5K. CD player, Jadi Orfi, I guess that's how you say it. Then there's a Weiss DAC 501. Turntable is an SME Model 10. Preamp, AVM PA 8.3. And then there are AVM SA 6.3 monoblocks. And all of this sits on HRS isolation shelves. And the equipment rack itself is a Quadraspire. Daniel just comes right out and tells me he no longer listens to records, CDs, tapes, any of that. No, he's done with that. All of his eggs, so to speak, are in the digital files basket. Local files reside in a 4 gigabyte solid state drive and they go to a M2 Mac Mini which feeds his Exasound E22 DAC. Then there's a Doge 8 Clarity Tube preamplifier and the power amp is a Prima Luna Evo 300. Speakers are Tecton double impacts augmented by RHEL S510 subs. Oh and then there's a cat, Cadius Finch, and she prefers classical piano. Hey, Aaron lives in Tucson, Arizona. He has Pure Audio Project Trio 15s with Voxative 1.6 full range drivers. Power amplifier is a Benchmark AHB2. Then there's also a Benchmark DAC3. That's obviously the DAC. And for streaming, a Blue Sound Vault 2, the TV, is an LG OLED, and all the interconnects, digital cables, etc., etc., are from Benchmark Audio. Jerry is from Parma, Italy. His source is an Apple iPad Pro. DAC is a Denifreps Aries 2. Preamp, Shit Jotunheim 2, connected via XLR cables to his two amp camp amps uh, to vertically bi-amp his speakers, which are the ever-popular Klipsch RP600Ms. Prashant is from Goa, India. He has a super impressive system. He has a lot of sources, uh, starting with two turntables, a Project Debut Esprit, and also an Audio-Technica LP60. For CD transport, a Macintosh MCD-1000, Streaming is handled by a Blue Sound No 2i, a bunch of reel to reels, a Kai 4000DS, Sony TC558, TAC A4300SX, and for cassette, a Denon DRW695. Phono preamplifier is a Project 2 Box DS and also an Audio Research LS26 tube line stage preamplifier. Oh, and for speakers, it's got a couple there. Uh, Sonus Faber Vermeer Signature and also Avant-Garde Acoustic Solo Active Speakers for a sub, Dolly P10. And the amplifiers for these systems are Jeff Rowland Model 8, which is a two-channel power amplifier, and then the Audio Research V140, those are the monoblocks. Mike lives in Valley Center, California. The cornerstone of his system is a 1976 Marantz 2270 receiver. Now, this is, he decided to buy this one because it's exactly like the one he grew up with that his father had and he listened to as a kid when in the 1970s. 
Uh, for sources, he has a Technics SL1210GR turntable with an Ortofon 2M black cartridge. Then there's a Marantz CD6006 CD player, uh, Blue Sound No 2X streamer, he uses for title and airplay too. Finally, the speakers are Klipsch Cornwall 4s in black ash. For all you room treatment people, Andre lives in St. Petersburg, Russia, and he runs Bowers and Wilkins 803Ds with rebuilt crossovers and wiring. Uh, the amplifier is a Harman Kardon Citation 22. It's also customized. The preamp is a Class A CP47.6. The DAC is an M2 Tech Mark III with a Palmer power supply. Turntable is a Denon DP1800, and the system is wired with Cardis and Siltec. And the room, a lot of that room treatment are wooden diffusers and rockwood absorbing panels. Ken built a decoupled soundproof room in his basement, and this is his system. The turntable is a Project RPM 9.1 tone arm, SME 309, cartridge is a Dynavector XX2 Mark II, phono preamp Dynavector P75 Mark IV, universal disc player is an Oppo UDP 203. The preamp is an NAD C658, the amp NAD C298, speakers Perlison S5M, and the sub is Perlison R212. Oh, so we got next up is Jerry. He lives in Cleveland, Ohio, and those big speakers are Dyn Audio Contour 60Is. They're resting upon isoacoustics Gaia 1 feet. Subwoofer is a REL S510. Turntable VPI Prime 21 with an Ortofon 2M black moving magnet cartridge. Uh, the phono preamp is a Sutherland Insight. Uh, the actual preamp itself is a Moon 740p, and that is by Sim Audio. And the power amp is an Octave Audio RE290. Then there's an Oppo Blu-ray player, which is a BDP 1030. Then we see a PS Audio Direct Stream Power Plant 15. A lot of AudioQuest interconnect cables, and the equipment stand is by Solid Steel. Now, Tom's speakers are Alltech slash Heathkit AS101 with updated three-way crossover, adding an EV T35 tweeter. He also has a pair of JBL C38 Barons and also a pair of JBL Muet L75s in-house. For amplification, the classic, the ultimate classic, Dynaudio ST70, and that's a tube amp, and then for class D, an Audio SDS440C. Preamp is a Conrad Johnson PV1. Oh, the turntable is a Thorin's TD124 with an assortment of cartridges by Ornophon, Sure, GE, Supex, and Denon. Tone arms are by SME and Alfred Bokrand and Recacut. Phono stage is a Lehman Audio Black Cube. John lives in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and he has a minimalist system that's keeping him happy while he's building his DIY speakers. So his current speakers are Onkyos that were originally part of a 5.1 channel home theater system, and they are being powered by a Dayton HTA 100BT hybrid integrated amplifier. The entire cost of the system that I just described is about $300. So good going, John. Stephen is next. He lives in Yonkers, New York. His turntable, I'm going to start at the top and work our way down. His turntable is a Nottingham 294 Space Deck. It's due for an oil change, he says. And that has a 12-inch Nottingham Space Tone Arm. Cartridge is a Lyra Delos. On the next shelf, from left to right, the power supply is from Antelope Audio. Then there's an Antelope Audio Zodiac Plus DAC. And his favorite piece of gear is the EAR, that's Esoteric Audio Research 
834P phonopreamp. Last but not least, a rogue Kronos Magnum running Russian KT-120s. And the speakers, yes, the speakers, are 6-ohm Totem Hawks. Dirk sends his regards, his best regards, from Germany. His amplifier is an AVIC I-180. The turntable is a transrotor dark star reference with a transrotor MC system. Phono stage is Lehman Audio Decade. Streaming is handled by a Lumen D2. The CD, SACD player is a Marantz SA-10. Speakers are Canton Ergo GS Editions. And the cables are all by Willbrand Acoustics. Dirk system is the last system today with a uh, narration with me describing what's in the picture, but I'm going to continue to show more systems just to squeeze in more, more of your stuff. Uh, and I want to thank everyone who has ever sent in pictures to be included in the Audiophiliac viewer systems. But please, if I haven't picked yours yet, uh, please understand I get so many, I can't run all of them. So anyway, thank you if you've sent in pictures, and I apologize if I haven't gotten to yours. If you like the channel, would you please consider joining and supporting me, this channel, through my Patreon? To do so is super easy to do. The address is on the screen right now. You can subscribe in dollars, pounds, euros, and pretty much every other cur currency on planet Earth. Um, anyway, check, check out the Patreon and see if it works for you. And beyond that, I can say, uh, yeah, if you just like a given video, including this one, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have yet to subscribe to the Audiophiliac YouTube channel, please do so. I would very much appreciate it. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.